new hardware from four space agencies, three crew exchanges, and 13 spacewalks, all in six months during the International Space Station's Expedition 16. If you take all the things we're trying to do in six months, uh, this is probably the busiest period, or, or certainly one of the busiest periods um, in space station history. And we've got a great crew, and they're ready for it, and we're excited. Astronaut Peggy Whitson was the first NASA ISS science officer when she was a flight engineer on Expedition 5. Now she's the station's first woman commander. I'm looking forward to all the new elements that we're going to be able to add to the International Space Station. Uh, three new modules will be arriving and, and a new uh, attachment for the uh, robotic arm will also be arriving. So we have the involvement truly of our international partners for the first time through all phases of this mission. So I think it's going to be very exciting. Her Soyuz commander is Yuri Malenchuk, the first former station commander to return as flight engineer. He saw no shuttles visit the station during Expedition 7. Three shuttle dockings is only part of what he'll see this time. There will be the European Agency module, European Transportation Vehicle, Japanese module. I will be participating in all those activities. Four astronauts will rotate through as flight engineer number two on this mission, a new one arriving with each shuttle flight. I think the huge advantage of having individual crew members associated with the specific stage is it allows those crew members to be specialists in the specific tests that are going on associated with the modules or the elements that they're bringing up. The first is Clay Anderson, who arrived in June with the S3, S4 truss and was on hand for the installation of S5. He'll be one of the robotics operators during the joint docked operations with the mission that will take him home. One of the key things for STS-120 is the removal of P6 from the top of the stack of the station and moved outboard on the left side of the station to hook to the other parts of the truss to give us that two sets of solar arrays. A second key is delivery of a second connecting node named Harmony. And a third is the arrival of flight engineer Dan Tani, who will take over for Anderson. During the first spacewalk of the mission, Crew members use the station robot arm to lift Harmony from the shuttle payload bay and attach it to the port side of the Unity node. Whitson and European Space Agency astronaut Paolo Nespoli take the lead in setting up the interior of the new component. On the second spacewalk, Tani and astronaut Scott Perizinski install new hardware on the outside of Harmony and undo connections between the P6 truss and the Z1, which have been mated since November of 2000. The two solar array wings on P6 were retracted during two recent assembly flights, so the truss can be moved to its new location. On the second EVA, uh, I will help unbolt the actual element, and uh, we'll have uh, Doug Wheelock inside running the arm, and, and he will initially uh, move the P6 out and sort of away from the station. The next day, the station arm hands P6 to the shuttle arm, then rides the mobile transporter into position to take P6 back. Tani flies the station arm to mate P6 to the port end of the truss during the next spacewalk. We mate the P6 to the P5 and then as soon as we can we're going to, uh, uh, once the electrical connectors are made, um, the folks on the ground will start powering the, those channels back up and we will start uh, attempting to um, deploy these solar arrays. On the last spacewalk of the flight, Whitson and Malenchiko prepare pressurized mating adapter number two for removal from the front of the lab. In our plan, there is a preparation of the PMA. That means working with the lines and connections, we'll need to disconnect cables, stow them correctly so we can move the module. Which happens after Discovery undocks. Tani runs the station arm. Whitson operates the common berthing mechanism. The arm grapples PMA-2, and the CBM between the PMA and Destiny opens. Canadarm-2 removes the docking port from the lab, carries it to the open docking port on Node-2, and the CBM there secures the PMA to its new home. A couple of days later, the CBM between the two nodes releases Harmony from Unity. The arm swings Harmony and PMA-2 around to the forward end of Destiny, and the CBM there secures the modules together. 
The external hookups are made by Whitson and Tani in two spacewalks the following week. The two EVAs that Dan and I will conduct actually will lay the what we call the umbilical trays and they are the fluid lines that will connect the thermal control system that's, that's based in the truss. Once we uh, interrupt that uh, line, that circuit of cooling, we have to shut down half the station again of power and uh, we need to connect that cooling back up uh, within hours to provide the appropriate cooling for the rest of the space station. That will leave a few weeks to finish activating and outfitting Harmony before the arrival of Atlantis with Columbus, the European Space Agency's laboratory module. It arrives accompanied by the next expedition crew member, European Space Agency astronaut Leopold Eyarts of France. The main objective of Columbus is to have uh, European scientific facilities um, integrated in the, in the International Space Station. That will be the first time that Europe will have uh, a manned facility uh, in space. And uh, for, for, for that reason, of course, this is very, very important. The day after docking, shuttle astronauts Leland Melvin and Stan Love use Canon Arm 2 to lift the new lab out of the payload bay and install it on the starboard side of Harmony. AARTS will lead the crews inside Columbus the next day to begin activation and checkout. The scientific racks will be installed on the central part of the module during the launch and, and during the, of course, the rendezvous and, and until the docking. So after this is done, we will have to move some of these racks, of these scientific racks, from their launch location to their final location. So this will be a big part of the activities, mainly during the, the shuttle, uh, dock, uh, when the shuttle is docked to the station. The exterior of Columbus gets some outfitting during the third spacewalk of the shuttle mission, when Love and Rex Walheim install the first two external payloads on the European laboratory. Uh, when the shuttle is gone, we'll be more focusing on the, what we call the commissioning, which is basically making sure that the, uh, the systems are working properly, that the experimental facilities, the, the, the scientific racks uh, are working as uh, we expect they are, they are supposed to work. During that time, Expedition 16 will also get ready to receive another European contribution to ISS, the Automated Transfer Vehicle. This uncrewed supply ship, launched from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana on an Ariane 5 rocket, can deliver more than eight tons of cargo to the station, three to four times the capacity of the Russian Progress supply ship. The fully automated rendezvous of the first ATV will take two weeks, so ESA mission control in France and the crew on orbit can test the system. There are different tasks to ensure safety, and there is a range of criteria to monitor how the docking is proceeding, where the crew members are um, responsible for making the decision to abort the docking. Uh, Yuri and I have been trained on it to do the, that rendezvous process and monitor it. Um, it's all automated, uh, but we have to monitor to make sure that the system which will be tested for the very first time is actually working correctly. So that'll be exciting as well, I think. Only weeks after the arrival of the ATV Jules Verne, Expedition 16 will greet Space Shuttle Endeavour. On board will be another new flight engineer, astronaut Garrett Reisman, and new station components from the space agencies of Canada and Japan. The Special Purpose Dexterous Manipulator, or Robotic Hand, capable of finer robotic manipulations than Canon Arm 2, and a pressurized logistics module for the Japanese laboratory complex. The logistics module will be temporarily docked to the zenith side of Harmony until the main Japanese lab module arrives after Whitson and Malenchiko have finished an eventful six months, setting the stage for future exploration. I think that history has demonstrated for us that exploration is worth doing. Uh, we never exactly know what we're going to find around the next corner and it's worth finding out. Every, every step of the way has been worth finding out.